um, what inspired you to start the Not A Tin podcast last year? Um, the Not A Tin podcast really started as something that was an outlet for me personally. Being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2020 of my sophomore season, um, it was something that I didn't expect to happen. And it was in this time in my life where I just wanted to be a normal college student. I just wanted to be a student athlete. COVID had just happened. So I was kind of ready to get back to my normal routine and normal life. So when this happened, um, I did everything in my power to keep that normalcy and um, stay in school and do my classes and stay on campus as much as possible. Um, so I was kind of going through the motions of it all and didn't really take time while getting diagnosed happened. I didn't really take that extra second to process what was really going on. And it wasn't really until after my treatment and after recovery that um, I started doing interviews for like U.S. lacrosse and inside lacrosse and news outlets. And that was the first time that I actually talked about the journey of getting diagnosed with cancer and what that looked like for me and my family. And the more interviews I did, the more I was like, oh my gosh, this is kind of nice to talk about. I kind of really enjoy sharing my story and hearing about how people are reacting to my story and how they might relate in some way or um, things like that. So it was kind of therapeutic to get interviewed and kind of explore answers to questions that I was never asked while getting diagnosed. So it was just really a great way to get in tune with my emotions. So I loved the idea of sharing my story. And I was like, I don't know what's the best platform to do this. Maybe it's an article, maybe it's a video, but I kind of landed on doing a podcast um, because I love to talk and I was like, I can talk all day. Um, And I was like, I really think this would be a really cool platform and something I can continue on doing because it wasn't just the idea of sharing my story that I loved, but I love the idea of sharing other people's stories as well. Um, The more I shared my story, the more people opened up about their personal hardships. And I just loved hearing about those and asking them questions And, um, right before I started my podcast, I was driving down the road and I was kind of reflecting on the year our season had just ended. And I was just like, gosh, this year, you know, if I could describe it in any way, it would just be not a 10. And I whipped out my phone once I got home and pulled out my notes page and I wrote down not a 10. And I was like, I'm going to do something with that name or something with that idea. Um, But I came to the conclusion that I'm so grateful that that year wasn't a 10 out of 10. It wasn't perfect. Um, And my lacrosse number has been 10 my whole life. It is now. So the name kind of just stuck and it turned into my podcast name. And um, the image is a four leaf clover because when I was getting diagnosed, I would find four leaf clovers everywhere, like once, once a day, especially when I got like the pain, the diagnosis, I would always find them. So it was kind of like a little sign from the universe that like everything was going to be okay. It was a good sign of hope. Um, so the whole idea of not a 10 is embracing these imperfections and learning about people's hardships. And at the end of the day, like, why are we grateful that hard things happen to us and what we learn from them? Um, and it's just been a great experience. The people I've talked to have change the perspective of, my, of how I look at life. And I've learned so much from them. And it's really just been great for my personal mental health. And it seems like it has helped other people as well. So I'm just very grateful for what it's kind of turned into. Awesome. And that's very interesting about the four leaf clover. I know. Yeah. That's that. yeah. That's, yeah <laughs> I'm that's Irish that. too. <laughs> oh, there you go. Just yeah. perfectly awesome. Um, so just to confirm, when you first started the Not A Tin podcast, it was, was it specifically for your mental health or was it like um, a combination of yours and the mental health? Club? I would definitely say that it sparked from um, helping my mental health. I really wanted an outlet and these interviews really helped. Like the more I talked about it, the more I felt better. But honestly, the main thing that I think I learned from getting cancer is that I love storytelling and I have a really deep passion for it and it stems way deeper than just my story I love hearing about other people's stories so I would definitely say the main idea of starting this was storytelling and I think a lot of times that takes a lot of vulnerability and that's something I had to learn 
Um, but if someone has the power to be vulnerable and feels comfortable and comfortable enough to share their story, then I would love to help them do that because it really helped me. Amazing. Um, so sticking with mental health, I'm curious, was mental health always kind of really important in your life growing up or was it really the experience of cancer? Because I know from my personal experience and in interacting with others, it seems like those who have a priority on mental health is either because they've struggled with it or because they know someone who has. So I'm curious, was it the cancer that really sparked your mental health um, passion or was it something before that? Um, I definitely think, I wish I could pinpoint, I, there's a question that gets asked a lot to people. It's like, when's the first time you heard about mental health? And I wish I had an answer, but I do not. Unfortunately, I don't remember. But the first time I think I really became became enlightened about mental health and started kind of digging more into what it is and what that looks like was definitely my transition to college. Um, being a freshman, it's really hard. You can have a great freshman year, but you're still dealing with hardships of moving away from home, changing so much change is surrounded by you. You're in a new environment. The sport of lacrosse is even different. When you become a freshman, the speed is different. The rules are different. So um, that transition was really hard for me kind of later in my freshman year so that was the first time where I kind of felt the presence of my mental health because I always had it everyone always has mental health but sometimes you don't really know it's there until it starts going kind of in the way that you would not want it to go so um it wasn't until my older sister who played at Maryland. She just graduated. She was a fifth year. She was a junior at the time when I was a freshman. She always like was so great at checking in on me. And I kind of gave her a little nudge. I was like, oh, was, I'm kind of in a period of struggling. And she actually sent me Victoria Garrick's Ted talk about like her Victoria's experience as a D one athlete and kind of the mental health side of it. And that was the first time where I was like, Oh my God, this girl, like, is totally hitting on everything that I feel like she feels the anxiety about being a student athlete. She feels the pressure. She feels the pressure from outside sources, but also from herself and um, trying to be perfect and not making any mistakes. And that's kind of where I first related to it. And I immediately from there, I kind of dove head first into like this mental health journey and being like a huge advocate and um, becoming educated myself on it. And um, it was definitely the like one of the first times where I was more aware of it. Um, and I think I just really, once I got diagnosed with cancer and experienced even a deeper side of mental health, that's where I kind of was like, okay, now's the time to take this a step further. And rather just being aware of my mental health, let's be an advocate and um, let's create a platform that will help myself and also help people. Um. So I went back and looked at your very first post for the Not a, Not a Tin podcast Instagram account. And you said something that really stuck out to me. You said, quote, we need to struggle in order to be the best version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about that? Yeah, it's crazy to say, but I always say this, that my greatest asset that I have was is getting diagnosed with cancer. Um, I don't really remember who I was before that. But right when I was kind of in this period of my life where I was struggling to figure out why this happened to me, um, I felt in deep down that I was like, this was supposed to happen to me. And even if it wasn't, I'm going to do something about it. And my mom actually told me a quote by Robin Roberts, who um, she was an, is an anchor woman on GMA. And it's make your mess your message. And I loved that. And I kind of once I heard that, I like full force was like, all right, we're going in on this whole quote, make your mess, your message. And it was kind of a time in my life where I was a mess, but um, I definitely had a message to portray. And that's kind of where I learned that having cancer, like it instilled so much wisdom and so much power in me that I was like, okay, we're going to take something terrible and turn it into something great in my life and use it to make me the best version of myself, but also help people around me. Um, it's definitely made me more of a person that's in tune with their emotions and can really feel like how things are impacting me and be aware of how I'm feeling. But having cancer or having hardship, it really makes you prioritize what's important in your life. And 
as student athletes, there are going to be struggles that you face and there are going to be hardships and there are going to be bad days, but you really have to look at bigger picture and be like, okay, what ones are worth my energy? Which ones are worth like addressing? Which ones are just a part of being a student athlete? Like, um, the hard drills that we have to do, like, sadly, we just have to do them. Um, but once like those things, maybe you don't really have to fight against. It's just part of the journey. But then there's days where it's like, okay, this might be a bad mental health day. That's worth my energy. And that's worth putting more, um, focus in on because it's something deeper than just going through the motions of being a student athlete. So I definitely think it's also made me very grateful. Um, I know more than anyone that lacrosse or life can be taken away in a second or in a day. So waking up every single day, even on the hard days when it's 5 a.m. and it's cold out and we have, we have conditioning, um, knowing that two years ago, I'm in a place where I dreamed of being because I didn't know if I'd ever play lacrosse again. So even on the hard days, just checking in on yourself and making sure that you're in tune with gratitude and um, being present is something that I really have learned. And um, it's made me also more competitive because I'm like, all right, like buckle up, like I'm in this to win it. Like we're gonna um, go full force because who knows the last time I'm gonna play. Um, so it's definitely made me the best person and also the best player I've been. Awesome. Um, so I don't, this wasn't one of the questions, but a lot of people like from the outside looking in, they see D1 athletes and they're like, they have the life. They, they get all sorts of free stuff. They get to travel. They get to play the sport they love. Um, but a lot of people don't realize the time commitment that goes into it and kind of the stress that takes with the morning workouts, the conditioning, um, freshmen have study hall. You're re really busy with classes. Then during the season, you're traveling, doing homework on the road. Um, how have you, despite the busy schedule, how have you gotten it within yourself to still do the podcast and still want to do, make time for the podcast? It's really hard. <laughs> I will be the first to admit it. Um, you can even look at like the timeline of my podcast. And when I first started it, it was summer. Um, and I was putting out episodes week by week. I was finding guests. I was editing episodes so fast. Like I would record and sometimes put out the episode the next day. Cause I just had that time. But the second I got to school, I was like, okay, now I feel like I'm doing three jobs. I'm a student athlete and a podcast host and producer. And I was like, okay, sadly the podcast, like I love it. And it's helped me in so many ways, but might have to be on the back burner just until I can adjust to this schedule again and get into the um, routine of being a student athlete, jumping from summer to going back to school. It's been really hard. And I think the number one thing that has helped me being able to do it all is being able to say no or being patient with myself. If I don't have it in me to do a podcast episode or need to take a break or need to take a step back, like I'm very aware of that and respect those boundaries with myself. I will only do the podcast as long as I like it and as long as it's helping people. Um, so definitely the past like year, it's been a little hard to navigate. And I also this summer I was away in Portland working at Adidas. So that was also really hard to um, do it all. So I definitely would love to be able to put out episodes week after week and find these awesome guests, but it's definitely been a struggle being a student athlete as well, because we already are so busy, but as long as I find time and, and I enjoy it, like I'm going to keep doing it. So as long as it's something I love, then it's really not that hard because it doesn't feel like work but time is, is, a, is very precious. So, um, work still working on the balance. So I don't have a flat out answer of how I do it, but, um, I try to find time when I can and when I feel up for it and when I feel like the passion for it, um, which I usually do, but it's just, it is hard. <laughs> so there have been 19 episodes so far, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I think um, you're right. <laughs> okay, and you had a variety of guests. Um, I saw, you had, I think your most recent one was a Miss America. Miss United States, yeah. Miss United States, sorry. My you're good, you're uh, good. <laughs> so, and you've had, um, I think it was a sports psychologist. You've had athletes. 
not just lacrosse players, um, but athletes from different sports. So you've had a, a very diverse, um, I would say, um, guest list for your podcast. Um, what have you learned during this time and from all these different guests? Yeah. Um, I always say that I'm like, I don't care who listens to my podcast because um, I personally learned so much from just interviewing these people. Like it could be me out to lunch with them and I'd just be as happy if it wasn't even on a public platform because of how much they've taught me. Um, I think the number one thing that I definitely learned from all of my guests is the vulnerability and authenticity that each guest carries and how open they are about talking about their story. And um, even though it might be a really hard topic, every single person that comes on is doing it because they want to make the world a better place. And I think that's just very inspiring. And I think they all are just so amazing and they all have such different backgrounds. But the number one thing that I see repetitive repetitively throughout my guests is they go through something, but that's not the end of their journey. It's not the end of their story. It's just the beginning. And here are all the things that they learned from it. And they have so much gratefulness to why they've learned it. And um, having a platform to share their story, they're also very grateful because they want to help people. So I definitely think that's the most common aspect between all my guests is that they go through hardship, but they wouldn't change that because of the lessons that they learn. And I also see that in myself as well. Um, and that they're always not looking for why bad things happen, but what are we going to do about it? Um, so it's turning, like we mentioned before, turning something so bad into the best thing or the most, the the thing that you've got the most wisdom out of. So it's definitely a common theme, but every single episode is so individual that um, I learned different things from each of them and they all have such different backgrounds and um, lessons and journeys that every single episode is unlike the other. So, um, and I love having a diverse group of people with different backgrounds. I love that every single guest is not a lacrosse player I learned just as much from Miss United States as I did from Charlotte North. Like, and they're so different, but um, every single thing that they've said, I, I can take with me in life or on the field. Um, so it's just been a really cool journey just to kind of see people from different backgrounds and connect with them um, no matter what thing they're a part of. Awesome. Um, one quick follow up on that. Mm -hmm. um, just out of my own curiosity as a fellow journalist, how do you go about, um, getting these different guests do you, do you know them yeah. all or how do you go about getting them um a lot of it is social media so that is a very powerful to tool the dms um just looking up like interesting stories one of my stories i actually just looked up like at espn 30 for 30 and i was like all right this is gonna be a long shot but i'm dming him um which is which was really cool that he actually responded um a lot of it is like who you know um like you can get in touch with but a lot of it is just like mutual followings like miss united states she went to virginia tech so that was a really good um connection right there um lots of little cross people like either my sister knows or i know or my teammates know um so i'm trying to think dr t which was the sports psychiatrist he and I connected on um, social media, but he also does a lot of work with the Syracuse lacrosse team. So there's always a connection there some way, somehow. But like if you DM people and they don't respond, all right, like move on. But why, like there's no harm in trying to reach out to people. So it's definitely like worth the risk. And I have like thousands of DMs that are just unanswered. But I'm like, why not DM them? Like maybe they'll come on. But um, it, it doesn't I don't get discouraged from an unanswered DM because there's always someone that we, that will come on and would love to come on. And there's always someone to connect with. That's maybe easier because of the people that, you know, um, next question is definitely one I'm very interested in hearing your, um, answer to. Um, so the podcast began in 2021. Um, and since then this happened before then as well, but since then it's definitely been in the public eye a lot more about student athletes taking their own lives. Um, and this is not specific to one sport, it's just across all student student athletes across all sports. 
um, at different levels, D1, D2, D3. Um, a lot of college athletes have taken their own lives. Has that impacted your approach to the podcast in any way? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the way we approach mental health, at least from my individual standpoint, is to be aware of boundaries and to be aware of what you know. I can only speak on behalf of mental health as an advocate and someone who's experienced it myself, but I can't speak on mental health as a professional, as a psychologist, as someone who has a background in the actual studies of mental health. Um, and I am very aware of those boundaries. Um, I, I don't understand a lot of medical terms. I don't understand um, the brain, like the biology behind mental health, but I have guests that come on that do, or I make sure when I talk about mental health that I'm mentioning those great resources like Morgan's message, like they are awesome. They're all very great advocates and they have some people in Morgan's message have more experience than I do in mental health, whether it be a medical background or from personal experience, um, like the mother of Morgan Rogers, like she has a, a very deeper meaning of mental health than personally I do. So making people aware of those resources um, is very important. And also, I think the way we approach when that topic gets brought up is that, yes, social media, we're doing a a really, I think personally, a, a good job, and we have a lot of work still to do, but we're doing a good job of making sure that mental health is a topic that's talked about on these platforms and people are getting involved in. And even my like own small platform, like that's a mental health advocate platform, but um, that's not enough at the end of the day. We can do all the work on social media, but even those resources may not be what a person who's struggling needs. They might need actual professional help. We're great outlets. We're great storytellers and we're great ways to connect with people and kind of put it out there of like sharing our stories and being vulnerable. But at the end of the day, if someone's struggling with their mental health, they might need to seek a professional and that might be on their college campus. That might be reaching out to a therapist or um, someone who has a deeper understanding of that. So I definitely think coming and approaching my episodes and approaching my podcast in an empathetic way that's also aware of how much I know and how much I can speak on is something that I really am in tune with. I would love to be able to help people more, but unfortunately I don't study that in school. I, I wish I had that background, but I do not sadly, but that doesn't mean I, can, I can't be an advocate and I can't share my experience and I can't share advice that helped me, but it might not help for every single person because a mental health is a, a one size fits all category. So um, I've definitely approached my podcast when those things happen. Um, it makes me definitely more sympathetic and empathetic and aware of, yeah, maybe I'm doing the work and maybe a lot of social media people are doing the work, but it can't, it can't just start and stop there. I really would love to see universities and bigger platforms step up when our student athletes need it the most. And we might be the spark of the change, but until systems get incorporated and um, like larger platforms start implementing change between their coaches and um, maybe sports psychiatrists on or psychologists on campus, like until those people step up, then we aren't going to be able to see the change that we want to see because like our us being advocates like we're making the story of where but um we need a deeper meaningful help when it comes to mental health because even though on social media we've grown a lot this issue is still happening and it's still very real it's just people are more aware of it but it's time for the bigger platforms to step up and it's time for um people who can help the change to also step up and um, really implement changes in the system. Um, so earlier you kind of talked about how the podcast has impacted you. Um, can you shine a light on how it's impacted listeners from to their DMs or however you yeah. interacted with listeners and how it's impacted them? Yeah, I mean, I love to think that if one person gains something good out of each episode, then I, I did the job, like I, I succeeded and it could be one person out of 500. Like it doesn't matter as long as it helped one person. And those DMS mean 
like the world to me or text messages or anything means so much to me. And I just know that like the work that I'm putting in and the work that my guests put in and that it's paying off and it's, um, it's really, what's the word resonating, resonating with, um, someone that's listening and just being able to hear people relate and like be empowered enough to share that vulnerable side with myself means a lot because it takes vulner- someone being vulnerable to start a chain reaction for other people to also be vulnerable. And if I can spark that, then that's awesome. Um, it's just been great. And like, I even love, like, it might be someone I don't know DMing me, but also like, even just my teammates are like, Oh, like what episode will- can help me like with this problem I'm having? I'm like, Oh, listen to that one. And, um, and it's just been great. And also it's been a great experience also having guests on, but also going on their podcasts. So I've had a few guests that also have podcasts like Dr. T he has one and Kylie O'Miller and we've been guests on each other's and just knowing that like her story on my platform is helping someone, but maybe my story on her platform is also helping someone. So it's just been a really great experience. And, um, it makes me feel like the work I'm doing matters. And I'm, I just really hope that someone out there learn something from every episode because that's why I'm, I'm doing it um to help the greater good and it just means a lot and like hearing other people's stories it's connected me to a lot of people that I, I never thought I would connect with but it's, it's just really awesome and um and I see it being younger and younger which is really cool like even little kids in middle school will reach out and talk about their mental health experience and um I'm like, wow, like in middle school, I, I didn't even know mental health was a thing. I don't think so to learn that they're aware of these things at such a young age, it's really honestly, like my podcast aside, like that means that the work that everyone is doing to help student athletes on the social media side is working because younger kids are becoming more aware and educated on the topic. Yeah, I totally agree. Based on Mm -hmm. lacrosse, um, some of the players that I follow I, when I first started I followed like a bunch of like current players that are in like high school or whatever and definitely noticeable from them compared to when I was in high school really wasn't yeah I love it I mean I didn't, like I'm like I don't even know when I was aware of mental health but you guys are starting at a young age and I love it so it's good um so just a few more questions as the zoom meeting timer popped up on my screen we have less than nine minutes <laughs> Okay, I'll talk faster. <laughs> oh, no, you're totally fine. Everything I need to upgrade to a bigger plan. Um, <laughs> for those who have not listened to the podcast yet, what if you could say one thing about it, what would you want them to know about? It? What, what's that one, one thing? Oh, gosh. I think from a host standpoint, like one thing I guess you could know about me is that if you're in a spot where you want to be perfect and you try to put on a brave face and a mask and act like all is well in the world and in your world, and you don't really want to ask for help. Like I was there. Um, I was in those shoes and the change really started once I took that mask off and learned about vulnerability and learned about the importance of authenticity. And I think that's really what the not attend podcast really speaks on is embracing the imperfections. Um, Like I read this quote by, I think it's Glennon Doyle, but it's like, I'd rather be something I'm going to botch this, but like, I'd rather be, I'm, I I don't even know, but it's really good. Um, You're going to have to figure that out. I'll figure it out and I'll send it to you. But, um, but like, just like anyone I think can relate to the not attend podcast because no one on this earth is perfect. So the, like, even though there are only 19 episodes within those episodes, you're going to find someone you relate to, even if it's just a little piece of advice or a piece of wisdom here or there, every single person can relate to the not attend podcast because like I said, no one's perfect. Um, but it's really going that next level and rather than just being like, Oh yeah, like, I'm not perfect, but embracing those imperfections and making them a part of you and really tuning in and honing in on um, why those imperfections are so important and why they make you the person you are today and why you're grateful for them. So I think the Not Attend podcast is just relatable. Um, and I would love for someone to just know that. 
That's a great message. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so you are entering your senior year, correct? Yeah, I'm in my senior year. <laughs> so <awesome>. weird. <laughs> um, what is the future of the Not A Ten podcast? Oh, gosh. Oh, I love, I just love it. And I, like I said, I don't want to stop as long as it's making me happy. Um, I know we have some merch right now, which is really cool. It was also really hard to get an inventory. Like I had no idea what I'm doing, but I was just like, oh, people wear the shirts. That's cool. Um, but I would love to make not a 10, not just a podcast, but a brand and a brand that helps mental health in student athletes. I would love to kind of start the journey of speaking to teams and speaking to athletes individually also about their own mental health journey and their own experience being a student athlete and kind of helping them um, as much as I can, even if I'm just a listening ear. Um, But I have gotten a little taste of public speaking. I was actually invited back to my high school to be a public speaker and talk about the podcast and talk about the message of it. So that was just something I was like, oh, maybe it can become bigger than this. Um, and maybe it's not just being having a platform of a podcast, but also having other platforms that would help student athletes, um, whether it be stories, essays, articles, um, talking to other student athletes. I would love for it to just turn into something bigger. Um, and I just love like the idea of it. So even if the podcast goes away, like the idea of not attend will never go away because it's something that's really important to me. And like, I'm going to embrace every single day, but I would love for it to turn into like my personal brand um, to help the bigger picture of being a student athlete. Very cool. And um, even if the podcast does go away at some point, at least the episodes can still live on. Yes. But also it's not going away. <laughs> like I just said, I'm like me, I don't know what will happen. I don't know what the future entails, but like, it can never go away because I just love it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to add? Is there anything that we might have missed? Um, I don't think so. I guess just like, like at the end of the day, like if anyone is struggling, like there are so many great resources out there to help them. Um, and I'll continue doing the work and, trying to implement change when we need it the most as student athletes. Um, and I'm really excited to see where the direction that we're going with talking about mental health, but there's just still so much work to be done. And if I'm even like a pers- 1% of that work, then I feel good, but there's a lot of people that also need to step up as well. Um, but if we just keep talking about it and keep having these conversations, then we're heading in the right direction.